Hey everybody, this is John Buck, back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. Uh, this video we're going to talk about demodulating amplitude uh, modulated signals. Again, this assumes you've just watched the video on amplitude modulation. Uh, and so uh, we're going to talk about once you have an amplitude modulated signal, which in ra radio is something that happens at the transmitter, how do you demodulate it to get back the original signal that was transmitted, which is what happens on the radio in your home or your car. Uh, I, I did realize one thing I wanted to show in the last video I forgot, so I'm just going to pick up here, is, is an idea of what does this look like in the time domain. Remember we said if I start out that I might have my x of t is equal to, or rather my y of t, is the signal I want to modulate times the cosine. So what I've shown here on, on the left-hand side, right, my, my modulating signal containing information multiplied by a carrier, uh, there is this, this uh, excellent little uh, animation on Wikipedia to show you what the effect of that looks like in the time domain. So let me bring that on screen now. So uh, this animation, uh, giving credit under uh, Creative Commons to Berserkerus, who, who, who put this up on Wikipedia, uh, as shown down here at the bottom. The top black graph is the, is the signal, which is just a constant uh, sinusoid. The middle graph is what happens in AM. It's what's happened if I have a a higher frequency carrier uh, that's mo multiplying the signal, we can see that what this is why it's called amplitude modulation is it's like the envelope. The amplitude envelope is rising and falling together with the signal. So this is where the information is embedded. The carrier keeps a constant frequency, but by changing its amplitude based on the signal that we're trying to transmit, that is where it embeds the information. And we'll see that that information can be completely recovered as long as the carrier frequency is high enough and things are separated enough from possibly other signals. Just as a, a quick uh, preview or teaser, the bottom graph is FM is frequency modulation. We'll talk about that as a different technique for embedding information in a, in a, in a waveform. Uh, and we'll talk about that next week uh, as we continue our discussion of, of common modulation techniques. But I just thought it would be helpful. This is a really nice animation that shows how, how the, uh, the amplitude is going up and down in sync with the signal we're transmitting. All right, so coming back to our example, when we finished the previous video, we said, well, I may have a, a, a spectrum of, of signals being transmitted between different radio stations that looks like this. And the question we're going to address in this video is how do I demodulate YJ Omega to get back my original white signal, the one I wanted here, the little rectangle that I transmitted, without interference from the others? How do I do it at all? And then how do I get back uh, to avoid the interference, right? So that's the key question for, for today's video. And again, we'll see the answer to this question is often easier to think about in the frequency domain. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we think about what we want to happen in omega, and then we use our Fourier transform properties to move it back to the time domain, or to say what's the equivalent operation in the time domain. So it's sort of clear, the first thing we'd want to do is, is, is shift this back to, uh, to the baseband. We'd want to shift this copy to the left by 10 and this copy to the right by 10. And if nothing's distorted them, they'll line up right on top of each other. They'll add up exactly and, and, and give me a copy back at zero, though I may have other, other issues from that. But so, so it's sort of counterintuitive or surprising at first that the first step in recovering this signal is actually to do the same thing you did to modulate it. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my, my received modulated signal and, and multiply it by a cosine in time with the same frequency as the carrier I used to create it. And I'll call that signal R of T. And so if I think about what's going on in the frequency domain then, if I have the Y of T is R of T, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Let me fix that. Right, uh, this is the uh, R, the output of this multiplier or modulator was y of t times cosine omega c of t. Well, that's the same thing we did to make the modulator. So we know what's going on in frequency. When I go say, well, what's R of j omega going to look like? It's the same thing we had earlier. Right, so just the same way that this multiplication in time is convolution with the frequency, we get the same thing back we had a minute ago just using new variables. Oop, wrong way.
Right? We already solved this problem in this previous video for getting y from x, and now we're just getting r from y, but it's the same basic idea that multiplying by a cosine in time is shifting each way plus and minus omega c in frequency and then scaling the amplitude by a half. So if I go back to my picture here, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a version shifted to the left by 10 and to the right by 10. So let me, uh, I'm going to have to rescale the frequency axis to make this fit, and let me show what that looks like. So I've actually drawn the, the uh, left shift first, and I guess this is, this is I forgot the amplitudes, there's another half. But when I shift everything to the left by omega c, the thing that was at plus omega c ends up at zero. The one that was at minus omega c is at uh, minus 2 omega c now, at twice the carrier. And I have these other copies floating around in between, and everything, what was at a over 2 is now a over 4, a over 4 is now a over 8. And then I can shift by the other direction. I can say, well, now let's look at what happens when I get the other copy. I'm going to draw it lined up right underneath here. So what happened when I shifted to the right by omega c? So I get a very similar picture, just everything shifted to the right by that. So now I have one copy that I want at the origin and another copy at 2 omega c. So if I added these two up, the ones at 0 would reinforce themselves. I get back in a copy that's a over 2 tall. All the others would sort of be left alone. So let's, let's see what happens. Let me now draw what happens when I add these two copies. Because remember, when I multiplied by the cosine, I made these two shifted copies with half the amplitude and then added them. So let me draw the picture of what happens when I add them. So when I add these up, the copies at 0 are right on top of each other, and they reinforce, so a over 4 plus a over 4 becomes a over 2. And then I have these other small copies of the blue and red other signal stations, the other carriers around it. And then I have this copy up at 2 omega c, and I have, have blue and red small copies around those. So I'm almost done here. I'm like now, I'm, I'm very close to having a scaled version, an amplitude scaled version of my original signal back. I've moved everything back to the original frequencies. There's just one step left. What can I do that would let me uh, keep the white copy but get at the origin, the one that's centered at the origin, and we know this original thing was plus or minus omega m, right? So if I sort of squeeze those in here, what could I do that would keep that but get rid of all the others? Pause the video and think about something you've seen in the class that would let you keep stuff around zero frequency and get rid of all the others. Right, hopefully you're back, and if you thought of a low-pass filter, you got the right answer. The last step we need here is we want a low-pass filter with whose band, bandwidth, let me, uh, I'll add the filter in green here. I want to make a filter that will keep everything, maybe that has a gain of one here between plus and minus omega m, <clears throat> so it's multiplying all these frequencies by one, and then all the other stuff gets removed. So coming back to my block diagram for my demodulation system, I'd say after I've done this multiplication by a cosine to shift things in frequency, the last step I need is a low-pass filter. So we'll call this H sub D for demodulation of J omega. To get back, we'll call S of S of t that, right? And and we're going to design this filter to have a passband that's big enough. I don't need to know what the original signal was, but if I know what its bandwidth was, right? I can say I want this. Ideally, I want this to be plus or minus omega m for the passband. So the original signal will get through and nothing else, right? So I know by doing this low pass filter, I'm then saying my, my demodulator output S of j omega is equal to some low-pass filter modulating, oh, not y of j omega, my bad. Right, so I'm applying that low-pass filter, my r of t here, and that will keep the copy centered at the origin, but get rid of all the others. Right, so if I come back here and think about what happens after I multiply everything between plus and minus omega m by 1, I'll keep this middle copy, and all the rest will be removed. So let me slide the page up some and sketch the result of that. So if this is my, uh, what I have here is my R of J omega, right? So if all the, you know, this is my, oh, I forgot to label, this is my S of J omega, my output here. I multiply 
the, the, uh, the green is telling me what the HD is. So I multiply it at each omega. I multiply HD of J omega by R of J omega. Well, for most places, HD is zero. All the way out here, outside of the filter pass band, it zeroes it out. And just this white copy comes through the filter multiplied by one. So I multiply by one, nothing changes. I get the same shape back. <clears throat> and so this is essentially the same thing I transmitted, just the amplitude has been scaled by a half. But I can fix that, right, if I think back to my radio. How do I fix the fact I have half the amplitude? Well, that's what this dial on the right is. My amplitude knob, my amplitude is fixed by the volume knob. I can always, if I get all the frequencies back in the right place, I can turn things up or turn things down to solve issues with the amplitude. Okay, so now if I, if I just a reminder says, if I go back and compare this to the original signal, right, I started out with this thing. And I've got the same thing back. I, I do want to emphasize the fact uh, it looks like the result is half as wide. But that's not really the case. It still would be at plus or minus omega m. I just had to rescale the frequency axis to get all this to fit on the page by the time I was done. Right? That the, if, when everything was going up to 2 omega c, I, I didn't plan ahead very well, I guess. If I'd been thinking more carefully, I would have chosen omega c, uh, the original signal to be narrower, and omega c uh, on my graphics to be smaller, so I had room for doubling it. So this really is the same thing from plus or minus omega m. I've just had to draw it squeezed in in frequency so that I could fit two plus or minus 2 omega c on this picture as I drew all the Fourier transforms of the demodulated signals. Okay, so just to wrap up and reiterate, if I'm going to demodulate an AM signal, I need to multiply it by a sinusoid at the same frequency I transmitted and then low-pass filter to get rid of all the extra copies. And so that's how the frequency division multiplexing trick works is that all these other blue and red copies around, when I demodulate, they come back near zero frequency, but not at zero frequency. And if the FCC has done their job right, and I've listened to them correctly, they are all separated enough in frequency that my low-pass filter keeps the one I want, but doesn't get any interference from the others. Okay, so that's the basic idea of AM. There's one tiny lurking assumption that's really important in practice underneath this. And we'll, we'll, I'm not going to do another video today, so we'll talk about this in class, which is, in order to make this work, I need to have things synchronized, that I need to have my demodulating cosine be the same signal, the same cosine transmitted, not just in frequency, but in phase. It turns out, if my demodulating sinusoid is a different phase, if I use sine instead of cosine here, I get drastically different results. We'll talk about that in class. And so what we've assumed here is synchronous AM demodulation, which is not what actually gets used in the real world. And, we'll, and I'll explain why when we get to class. Okay, so that's all for today. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.